Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Welcome po sa isa na namang episode ng online series ni Inang Pamantasan kung saan ang pagkatuto ay walang hanggan. Ito po ang PNU Talks. Ako po si Dr. Diana Estuliao Madumba, ang inyong learning from homebody para sa episode na ito. I-comment ang inyong mga katanungan at kuro-kuro tungkol sa episode natin ngayong araw. I am a graduate of Philippine Normal University from kinder to high school batch 1999. I took my anesthesiology residency in Philippine General Hospital and furthered my training with pediatric anesthesia in year 2012. So, nung nag-message po sa akin si Ma'am Carmela Buhain, if pwede ba ako magbigay ng online lecture para dito sa ating PNU Talks, ang naisip po talaga is, what? Lecture na naman! Hindi, kasi ayoko po talaga na nagbibigay ng lecture or nagsasalita sa maraming tao. Pero since teacher ko siya at hindi naman ako makakatanggi, so I said yes. And after I said yes, sabi ko, ano ba ang pwede kong ibigay na lecture sa inyo? Naisip ko, since doktor naman ako, magbigay ako ng lecture about COVID since usong-uso yung COVID ngayon. Kaso, malamang, alam na alam nyo na yung info about COVID, how to prevent it. So, wag na lang. Tsaka baka madepress lang kayo lalo kasi pataas ng pataas yung nagkaka-COVID sa atin ngayon. So, gusto ko maka-inspire sa inyo. So, I will talk about my journey on becoming a doctor and I will also talk about my line of field which is anesthesia. Simula nang magkamalay ako, sa tuwing tinatanong ako kung anong gusto kong maging paglaki ko, ang sinasagot ko po ay gusto kong maging doktor. Hindi ko naman alam na matagal at mahirap pala ang maging doktor. Matagal po kasi additional 5 to 12 years after you graduate college and mahirap kasi sobra yung pagdadaanan mo, sobrang pag-aaral, sobrang puyat, pagod, pero syempre since gusto naman gusto ko naman ito, so tiniis ko po. Ang magulang ko po ay parehong graduate ng PNUBS Education. Noong ako po ay kinder, natatandaan ko pa na ang daddy ko ay janitor po sa umaga at nag-aaral siya sa gabi. Then, uh, di kalaunan, parehas po silang nakapagtapos ng kolehiyo. Ang mami ko po ay natanggap sa isang pribadong paaralan sa Guadalupe Catholic School at ang daddy ko naman po ay natanggap sa pampublikong paaralan sa Epifanio de los Santos Elementary School. Uh, unti-unti po, gumaan po ang aming buhay Uh, nakapagpundar kami ng sarili naming gamit and then nakalipat na kami sa mas malaking bahay apat po kaming magkakapatid at ang bilin sa amin ng aming mga magulang ay laging pagbutihin ng pag-aaral yun lang yung lagi nilang sinasabi tapos tuwang-tawa naman sila nang magtapos ako na valedictorian tapos ito na college na so pilian po ng kurso kung ano ba ang pipiliin ko Uh, gusto ko pa rin talaga maging doktor. Pero sabi ng mami ko, try ko daw yung accountancy. So, nag-apply naman ako ng accounting. Pero since pumasa ako ng BS Public Health, so, on the line of doctors, uh, of medicine pa rin yung, gusto, uh, yung pinili ko. So, pumasa po ako sa UP Manila BS Public Health. Awa ng Diyos, may kumuha po sa akin as scholar na sinasagot po yung tuition fee ko. So, wala po akong ibang gagawin kung hindi mag-aral na mabuti para ma-maintain ko po yung scholarship ko. Ang mga magulang ko po, doble kayod pa palalo kasi hindi lang naman ako yung pinag-aaral nila. At kung ano-ano pong racket yung pinasok ng mga magulang ko, nag-tutor po sila, nag-cater ng pagkain kapag may event sa school, nagbenta ng mga tsokolate, prunes, relo, kung ano-ano pong pwedeng pagkakitaan, pinasok po talaga nila. Napakasipag po ng mga magulang ko at napakaswerte ko po sa kanila kasi gustong-gusto nilang maibigay sa aming magkakapatid yung the best para sa amin. Tapos, eto na, college na. So, tinatanong pa rin ako ng magulang ko kung gusto ko talaga magdoktor. So, naisip ko, yun, yun talaga, yun talaga yung gusto ko eh. So, sabi ko, gusto ko po talaga magdoktor. So, uh, Mabuti na lang yung tito ko, may nahanap siya na isang scholarship na magsasagot ng tuition fee ko. Pero may certain amount lang. 
Malakas siguro ako magdasal kasi natanggap ako sa PLM. Pero kahit na mas mura yung tuition fee dito kumpara sa ibang medical school, mahal pa rin ito para sa aking mga magulang. So, akala ko hindi na matutuloy yung pag-enroll ko. Maputi na lang, may nahanap na scholarship ang aking tito na sasagot sa tuition fee ko. So, after 4 years of medical school and 1 year of internship, naipasa ko po ang physician licensure exam ng PRC. At naging doktor na nga po ako. So, proud po ako sa narating ko. Pero mas proud po ako sa sipag, tiyaga at determinasyon ng aking mga magulang na mapagtapos po kami. Matapos kong pumasa sa PRC, nag-moonlight ako ng isang taon sa Santa Rosa. Pagkatapos noon, nag-residency training ako sa UPPGH sa anesthesiology for 3 years and then another 1 year for pediatric anesthesia fellowship. So, this is the part wherein I lecture about anesthesia and its misconception. So, number one misconception is as anesthesiologists are not doctors. Um, we are doctors po, I assure you. Uh, maybe hindi kasing kilala ng internist, pediatrician, or surgery. Maybe because your interaction with us is limited to the pre-op evaluation, during the operation, the post-op rounds, and in the pain clinic. But, I think we are the most well-rounded doctor. We become internist if adult yung pasyente and then pediatrician if bata po yung pasyente. Uh, we also become your cardiologist, pulmonologist, nephrologist, neurologist because we make sure that every organ in your body function as it should be during the operation. So, second misconception is anesthesia is just putting you to sleep. No, we don't just put you to sleep. We are the reason you wake up. That is by God's grace and mercy, of course. When we do general anesthesia, we give opioids so we will not feel the pain of laryngoscopy and intubation. We also give muscle relaxants that stops you from breathing and your muscle loses its tone so that it is easier to operate on. From then on, we control your heart rate and respiration. Handling anesthetic drugs is an art and science. We need to give proper balance so we wake the patient up pain-free without neurologic deficit and healthy. Another misconception is anesthesia makes you forgetful, especially if you've been exposed to it for multiple times. That is not true. While yes, we give drugs that has amnesic side effects, it is just temporary. It is for you to forget whatever anxious feeling you might have or a scary experience during the operation. There are different kinds of anesthesia for every kind of procedure or operation, and we tailor fit the anesthesia to be given to the patient's current health status. So here are the examples of the patients that I've encountered in the past few days. Case number one is a 40-year-old male who had hepatic abscess and was scheduled for emergency ultrasound-guided percutaneous drainage of hepatic abscess. Since this is an emergency case, I get to see the patient on the day of surgery itself. We do preoperative evaluation of the patient, get their history, do physical examination, and review the chart for entries of other doctors and their laboratory exam. We also explain to them and their relatives the planned anesthesia, its risks and benefits. For his anesthesia, I chose to give IV sedation with local anesthesia to the site of puncture. This is a minor procedure that doesn't need deep anesthesia. So I gave some anxiolytic and sedative to put the patient on light sleep and opioids for the pain. We always continuously monitor the patient's vital signs and we also watch what the surgeon is doing so that we are aware if there are sudden blood loss or if there is a need to supplement additional pain relievers. After the procedure, the patient is transferred to PACO until he is fully awake and then back to room. The next day, I do post-op rounds to see if the patient is doing okay and if there is a need to add or lessen the pain medications. Case 2 is a 30-year-old who developed necrotizing pancreatitis after undergoing ARCP because of gallbladder stones. Uh, he was scheduled for fluoroscopic-guided pancreatic drainage and cholecystostomy. This is an emergency procedure and I get to see the patient and review his chart at the catheterization lab. At first glance, I can already tell that this is a septic patient. He has fever, fast heart rate, and rapid shallow breathing. 
and very high WBC count indicating infection. He is also very anxious. I calmly told the patient what to expect during the procedure, the plant anesthesia technique, risk, and benefits. I chose to do monitored anesthesia care at that time because the patient's septic status. I gave very little opioids and sedative, some local anesthesia, and lots of reassurance and hand-holding. Sometimes, the patient just needs reassurance and hand-holding, and they will calm down. Case 3 is a 50-year-old female who was scheduled for elective laparoscopic removal of her gallbladder. Since this is an elective case, I saw the patient a day prior to surgery. I review her history, do physical examination, review her labs. I explain the planned anesthesia, which is general anesthesia. So in the operating room, we always check that the anesthesia machine is working properly. We prepare all the needed materials and medicine prior to induction and all the monitoring equipment needed. In general anesthesia, the patient is in deep sleep. We gave sedatives, opioid, and muscle relaxants to facilitate the intubation. We place endotracheal tube or other supraglottic devices to help us ventilate the patient. We also give anesthetic gases, sedatives, and or opioids depending on the need of the patient to maintain their level of deep consciousness. Once the surgery is finished, we titrate down the anesthetics, make sure that they are able to breathe on their own, and then remove the endotracheal tube. Our patient stayed in the recovery room for two hours prior to transferring her back to room. I also prescribed some pain relievers for her. The next day, I also did post-op rounds to see if she is okay and ready to go home. Case number 4 is a 22-year-old female who presented with right lower quadrant pain and on assessment has acute appendicitis. She is for removal of her appendix. I explained her anesthesia as spinal anesthesia, which she consented. Spinal anesthesia is when we insert a needle at your lumbar spine and administer anesthetic directly into the cerebral spinal fluid. There will be motor and sensory block from the lower half of the body to facilitate the operation. We also give sedative and anxiolytic so the patient is asleep during the procedure. Return of motor and sensory function varies between 2 hours to 4 hours depending on the dose of anesthetic. Your anesthesiologists are not limited to the operating room procedures. We also do out-of-OR sedation like in CT scan, MRI, dental procedures, or during endoscopy, colonoscopy, and other minor procedures. Here is my 2-year-old patient diagnosed with nasopharyngeal carcinoma who I sedate every day for his radiation therapy at Mother Teresa of Calcutta Medical Center in Pampanga. For pediatric patients, it is more difficult to deal with because sometimes they cannot understand what you are saying or simply because they are afraid of needles. As much as possible, I establish rapport with them and explain to them what I will do. Even if procedures are done outside the operating room, I still make sure basic equipments and monitors are available like oxygen tank, suction machine, pulse oximeter, and emergency medications. After the procedure, he stays at the recovery room for further monitoring until he's fully awake and ready to go home. I would like to ask if you could extend any help to David. You may contact his mother at his number. Other anesthesiologist specializes in acute and chronic pain. This is my friend, Dr. Emily de Ramos Cua of Manila Doctors. She holds clinic and see and treat patients who has complaints of pain ranging from Bell's palsy, rheumatic pain, post-operative pain, back pain, to cancer pain, and many more. She prescribes medications and if needed, do interventional techniques if oral medication is not enough. Since the start of pandemic, she also accepts online consults. So that is the life of being an anesthesiologist. Uh, my take-home message for you is if you have a dream, believe in it and do whatever you have to achieve it because in the end, all the hardships will all be worth it. Have a good day and stay COVID-free.